Okay, and hopefully, um, you know, it'll help you guys make a decision if you haven't already used it or, um, you know, if you're interested in uh, how it looks in Brightspace. Okay, so um, without getting too technical, right, LTI, because I'm not, um, you know, I'm not in IT, I'm a librarian, and there's a limitation to what I know technologically. But learning tools interoperability is what LTI stands for. And basically what that is, it's a collection of code. It's a standard, a language that is specifically used in learning management systems like Blackboard and uh, Brightspace. Uh, just a side note, we did uh, utilize this integration within Blackboard for about two years before um, moving to Brightspace. Um, as I didn't say, we obviously are part of cohort one, so we're already using, we moved to Brightspace um, LMS this fall, and we had a uh, set up and testing this summer. Okay, so one of the, uh, there's a lot of benefits to using an LTI. And one of the major ones are um, it, streams, it streamlines your authentication. So we utilize SAML, a uh, single sign-on technology for our databases and uh, computers and everything that uh, students and faculty use. So when they access their learning management system, they're already signing in. And the idea is when they're using the library tools, they don't have to repeatedly keep signing in. Um, and so this allows for a nice streamless um, user um, experience, okay? And um, it eliminates a need to use external links and you're navigating outside of your course shell. Um, so here um, I created this slide where it, you know, it's funny because I, I still am a little confused on what the difference is, but I understand it in the way of uh, specifically, as I just said, the LTI is specific for learning plat, uh, learning management systems, and similarly to APIs, they work. So they they share language, and they um, they facilitate communication between two applications. All right, API stands for Application Programming Interface. Doesn't really mean much as far as you know vocabulary words. It's it's basically a bulky collection of code, but an API. For Brightspace or Desire to Learn will only work within Desire to Learn, whereas the SpringShare LTI can work across platforms. So the integration is slightly different. Um, just to go back, sorry. My understand the way I understand API is more along the lines of widgets. Um, as librarians, we're probably pretty pretty familiar with widgets. Um, and that's a very simplified code in order to use an external program within the same window, um, you know, website. But once you click inside that widget, there's you're very limited at what you could do. So you're taking, uh, you know, YouTube, uh, for example, if you click within that widget, then you're brought into YouTube and then you have to deal with logging in. So an API, very differently. You can interact with it. Uh, probably most famously, um, you, you're using APIs and you, you don't even realize it would be uh, social media sites like Facebook, Twitter. When you see um, you know, an article and it says, uh, read it within, read in Facebook, it takes you there and opens you, brings you to Facebook and then allows you to log in, but you're still kind of in that site you were at. So the, where you're redirected. So if that makes sense to you, it kind of made me understand it a little more that APIs are a lot more in depth. You could do a lot more um, and it handles uh, logins and LTIs do utilize API, but um, specifically, you know, per product. Anyway, 
Okay, so in my our main um, emphasis to look into LTIs is, well, you know, why even bother? What What's the benefit? And according to a lot of user research and on, on digital environments and LMSs, and if you ask a lot of your students that you teach to and what frustrates them is exactly what this slide says, is they wanna be able to access their work on any device they can and mainly Old Westbury, um, our students really utilize mobile devices. Um, a lot, we have a lot of commuters from Manhattan and if they're taking a train or a, a you know, subway, they wanna read um, you know, their coursework or do their readings on their phone as, they, um, you know, as, <laughs> as needed. And they don't want to sign in multiple times and they, they don't wanna have so many open tabs on their uh, browsing sessions. All right, so just to give you an overview, I know SUNY is a huge um, institution. We have 64 campuses. So if you don't know where we are, right? We're on Long Island. We're very close to New York City. Um, we have, 45 undergraduate programs, 4,000 is a little bit high for us now. We've seen a little bit of a drop of enrollment, so it might be a little under than that. We have four schools. Um, you know, we are a small comprehensive university. So um, the library, Right now, there are four uh, instruction librarians. We have six librarians in total, uh, including the library director. Our instruction librarians mainly do one shot um, point of need research, um, meaning we usually will ask for a uh, syllabus or an assignment that the class is working on. And um, most of us will put together a lib guide, a course guide, and have a lot of um, links and resources that are going to help them at their point of need at their uh, whether it's a major research paper they have to write or for English comp uh, uh, two classes um, if they have to write a essay or a comparative um, you know study so that's basic and then um, generally uh, on average our librarians uh, may do anywhere from 40 to 60 information, uh, you know, information literacy courses um, per semester. So, you know, uh, maybe 10 each, uh, each librarian and it, it fluctuates, you know, but just to give an average. We do, we all share in responsibilities, even though a lot of us do have departments uh, that we handle, you know, like a lot of smaller institutions are uh, we do everything so we we don't really have one we do reference we do instruction and you know at, in my in my um uh, in my instance i take care of archives right okay so now i'm going to get into the actual steps of what i had to do with in LibGuides. Um, now, my role for this, for the single course, really was not too in depth. It wasn't that hard um, to set it up. You do have to have a role of an ad ad administrator to access this admin drop down here. And then within that, you see this LTI builder. Okay. Um, some of the things you set up, this is I because I selected single course setup. Um, there's another, um, when you set up auto magic, there's, there's just different fields. But this is pretty simple, not much to, um, you know, fill in here. You just have to have a naming convention. Most of us use library or library resources and how it's how it might show up within uh, bright space. And then it took me a minute to figure out until we actually were on um, bright space, the actual host name, I wasn't sure what we were supposed to use. Okay, and then this, this is what needs to be um, communicated with your instructional designers. Now I know um, all of us do it a little have 
have it a little differently based on our institutions. Um, but this configuration settings is specific to Old Westbury. And, you know, I'm not like anyone's going to really use any of our numbers. <laughs> I want to use our guides, but that's why it's blocked out. Every Everyone's configuration for each school is different. So this is what our instructional designers needed and they communicated with SUNY. Now it might be different for different institutions, but because we have SUNY online and they, they're the main administrators of our learning management system. Our institutional designers are our institutional administrators, so they're limited in what they can do. So I, at least I know with the, um, the team that I work with on campus, they communicate readily with uh, SUNY. And, you know, I had to, I provided this information to them in the summer and I, I just had to wait till it was uh, put in place. All right, um, yes. Once it was, I was told that we imp they implemented it, I had to test it and see that it worked. Um, like we have a very good relationship with the instructional designers and um, conveniently their offices are located inside the library. And so it's very easy for me to um, you call on them, ask, have a conversation and uh, work out any, kinks or um, you know problems I might be having. So we asked them to set up just an empty uh, you know a, a test site uh, within uh, desire to learn so we can test it. What I learned very recently was that there is a role um, of a librarian role which um, could be very useful. I never utilized it within Blackboard. In fact I, I don't even know if it was available. But um, now that I know this is an option, um, I may utilize it in the spring when I teach for a certain faculty member who is, um, I have asked to be um, added as an instructor in her class before. So I, um, she's, she's not that technical savvy. So I would embed the LibGuide within her course, send emails to, um, this was mainly when we were mainly remote and on COVID quarantine. I would email the students the link for Zoom and um, you know, communicate with them. Uh, there was a point in our school where our instruction room, our uh, computers didn't work. So in order to do an in-person instruction, um, Hmm. they had to bring their own laptop. So I needed to communicate that with them. So this librarian role is something that you may want to utilize. You, um, you know, the instruction or designers or, or admins have to, you have to be added. You obviously would need um, permission from your instructor, but this is a way to embed yourself. And this role, you can do everything the instructor can do, but you're, you don't get the grade book and you don't get those assignments. So it's, it's really nice. Um, I'm considering um, partnering with one of my liaison uh, departments to maybe try it out um, as a test run just to see, um, you know, and take statistics on, you know, how much the, the library pages are utilized and, you know, if, um, you know, at maybe do some uh, survey questionnaires to the students, see if it affected their learning. But uh, anyway, okay. All right, so here, this is just in a, this, to, <laughs> I'm sure you're all, um, you know, it, you know, it chomping at the bit of, well, you know, what does it look like within Brightspace? So here's a screenshot. Uh, you see here, I, I was able to get a student view and it's, it, it, it's how ours is set up. Um, a lot of things are customizable within Brightspace, but these are modules here that we set up. And once, as you see this silk showcase, I'll be in the next slides showing how I implemented it. And then 
hopefully go giving a live demo so you can really see what it looks like. Um, okay, so this is within um, the options within Brightspace. I know the difference uh, when we had this with Blackboard, um, it was a different area, it wasn't activities. We were able to create course content. It was slightly different on where it was located. So this was this is something where you find it. So it's external learning tools. And then the next uh, pop-up window is all our institutions um, external learning tools. Right. And so you see certain things are here. My math lab. Um, I think turn it in my ch zoom shows up here. And this is what our thing our uh, tool is called. I'm not thrilled with the name, but as you see here old. This is what SUNY online set up almost similar to um, how our Primo and Exalibris. Um, URLs look, that it's a general name, and then our um, OLD is for obviously Old Westbury. So if you were to have this integration, it likely might look like this, but the caveat is uh, the plus, we can rename this. So once it's added, you change the name to something that makes sense. Um, but again, that's how it shows up. So it's part of my instructions on how to do it. And then uh, one of the things, uh, once it's added, then you, there's two ways to do it. Uh, you either select the link there or view topic, and then it brings the actual tool, the SpringShare LibGuide tool. Now this, as the slide says, this is the actual tool. And I, once I brought it up, I knew right away because it looked exactly the same as what we used in Blackboard. So the, the options are all similar. Once it's integrated, um, you put your main site, if, if it's LibGuides, you know, obviously, whatever, if you have multiple views or uh, you know, some schools have uh, their URLs a little different within LibGuides. But you have certain options, a single guide, a content, or your A to Z list, subject. So you have a couple of options on what to choose. This is some of the options here at a uh, selected, so a full lib guide. Um, this is a sociology resources, you'd like a department guide. And then it says, um, you know, you can, if it's a multiple page guide, what uh, page is it gonna open to? Okay, and this is how it looks within, um, within that course shell. And I had named that Spring Share. I clicked right on it and named it Sociology Department Resources. And everything in here, this is the guide embedded. Um, you could see it's within that course management system. There's these, um, our chat tool, everything is, is there for students. And if they wanna open it in another window, well, they have that option right here. Um, let me see. Okay. And then probably the most important part, uh, piece to this whole project is communication, right? So how are faculty gonna know to do this, right? And um, you know, we like to give our, our faculty, um, you know, intellectual freedom. So we, you know, we're a little bit less concerned with, um, you know, having things generated automatically. Okay. Okay, yeah. So basically, yes, the question that what came in is um, communication, communication, communication. So this, um, this is a PDF four page instruction sheet that I send out to my liaison departments with my emails every semester. When I get a request for a class, um, like I said, I explained in the beginning how we normally will, um, if we get a request for a class, we'll, we'll get um, a, a syllabus, a assignment sheet and um, 
And then when I send the link to them, if I, if I had created a new page, I then send this instruction sheet. Uh, there's a way to track and see if it's being implemented. And that's the, if, for those of you who know uh, LibGuides uh, and SpringShare, they have so much, um, their statistics are wonderful uh, in tracking. So there's, you could see how, I can see how many times it was added, how many times the links were accessed. And um, and then the the training within um, within SpringShare is just wonderful. There's so many pages to really um, you know go, help you set it up. I will um, I will mention some of these instructions um, are meant for smaller schools. So it's a little bit different when they start describing the administrative role within the learning management system because we are a huge institution. So um, again, you some of the settings in, in these or the instructions, it's what SUNY had to do. So um, that is the, all I have to show for um, the, <laughs> this portion. And I think there's still time to show you Brightspace. Okay, let me just see. Yes. Yes, and um, in fact, too, I've had faculty members uh, within sociology. Um, this implementation uh, didn't happen for us right away uh, at the start of the semester, as much as I wanted it to. Uh, it didn't. So in fact, I had professors setting up their classes that imported from Blackboard and they were looking for this integration. And so those, I said, look, I'll, I'll send an email out uh, to, as soon as it's, it's, um, it's set up. And, and um, so that's, that's how it, um, we were able to communicate that. Okay, so I'm in a student view here. And this is it. So we could see the whole window, right? I'm within, I'm still within um, Brightspace. You know, the chat widget comes up, all our drop downs, you know, and then the specific pages for this library guide, right? And so I'm not getting taking, taken elsewhere. So this um, in itself is wonderful. Uh, let's see. I don't think I have time to show auto magic. Um, I did create these, uh, a separate slide deck basically, and I'll, I'll share this as well. Um, we decided to not use it mainly because, um, let me show you. Um, it was too labor intensive for our staff. Um, there are certain things that um, gets matched on metadata. And so you could see these options up top here are a bit different. There we go. All right, there's a lot more to the configuration. So this slide tells you what it actually matches. So you have certain um, criteria. You have, you're telling the system, the LMS, what label in the metadata to match. And then this particular page is saying, if it doesn't find a match, what should we do? And then these are, there's what's called an LTI page, which is a landing page. And then if it doesn't find that, or if you, to put a link, you know, what other page, and you can create any page you want and have that be your redirect. Again, I didn't have, we didn't have time to do this. This is the, the, configuration of the landing page. And I think I would like to show you, if, I don't know if I took a, a screenshot of what it looks like, but what I don't like is you're limited at customizing this. It just looks a certain way and I just didn't, I just didn't like it. The configuration is a little different too. So within a guide metadata, uh, the settings within your guide is where this metadata field is. And I didn't mention it before, but your guides in order to show, they have to be public. They cannot be private or internal or unpublished. 
And so with this, this was the criteria. If we put LTI and then the value, this was this is the naming convention that, you know, um, it's a course name for sociology senior seminar. So I, you could put a multiple different um, LTI values. Okay. Um, let me see. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. I know. <laughs> I know. One more thing I want to show you. So this is the actual guide. Um, this was where the metadata was, right? And then let me just show you really quick. I'm going to show you. Okay how it works and how the preview is. Um, okay. So here, just that, that site I showed, the sociology one. This debug actually gives you an example of how it matched. So it's showing me that it matched here. And then, like I said, I just don't like the appearance of this. This is not what I, you know, if it doesn't match and we're a school, we have a lot of libguides. So it's just, um, that was our major obstacle, okay. And, and frankly, um, SUNY actually had a, um, they had an issue with, um, they had an issue with um, adding this auto configuration for us um, because the URLs were very similar. They weren't able to do both. So we actually wanted the auto matching and single, but we decided since you can, can only do one, we wanted the manual. So um, they're trying to work out the kink. So hopefully those on other, you know, on for, who on uh, the next cohorts will, you know, they'll have it worked out and we might be able to add both configurations, but I'm sorry, I had a lot to show. And I think I hit on it. If there are any questions, I'd love to, uh, see yeah the the default is terrible but um and again i'm still working with our uh instructional designers because as i'm testing it i'm seeing certain links are opening external as i want it to be internal um i don't want you know they have the option within brightspace to navigate out and um brightspace actually recommends you using external links but as we know for doing accessibility um training in websites um external links are problem attic because of mobile devices you know you you lose that link sometimes so anyway i'm all, all right. done thank you very much thank